This greeting gesture continued for another week, but one thing stood out for Oma. He never put money in her bowl. Once upon a time, in the big city of Onicha, in the town of Agi, there lived a very beautiful young blind beggar called Oma. Despite being a beggar, she was known for her extreme kindness to the people of Agi. She would use some of the money she got from begging to buy biscuits for the kids in her streets. She was an interesting beggar. She would always look neat, even as a poor, broke beggar. Prior to her begging career, Oma told the people of Agi that she used to be a very successful trader in a different city before her shop was caught in a fire incident and she lost everything, including her sight. She, however, refused to mention the city to them. She had a friend called Ada who relocated with her. Ada is Omar's guide and confidant. She would help Omar come to her begging spots every day and, in fact, look after her and her collections. They were so tight that they knew each other's secrets. The people of Agi were very fond of Omar. They would always drop money in her plate while saying some prayers so that help would come for her eye surgery. As she mentioned that she was only begging to source for money to use for her eye surgery. Any day Omar did not come to beg, they would be very worried. Omar's popular spot was close to Mama Ijoma's shop. Mama Ijoma was a very good cook that ran a mini restaurant. Every day, Mama Ijoma would offer Oma a free lunch, but Oma would insist on paying and would still buy sweets for Ijoma, Mama Ijoma's daughter, before leaving every night. Mama Ijoma grew very fond of Oma. Her kindness and good-heartedness was a mystery to Mama Ijoma. She would always heal her every morning when she comes to shop. Oma, Oma, how na? How you day today? She would always ask Oma. One day, Oma did not come to beg. Mama Ijoma was worried but could not do anything as nobody knew where Oma lived. She would come out to her begging spot before sunrise and return after everyone else had gone home. Mama Ijoma decided to give it another day. Maybe she needed to rest today. I'll see her tomorrow, hopefully, she said to herself. The next day and the day after, Oma still did not show up. Mama Ijoma became very worried. In fact, everyone in the area where Oma would normally stay and beg were worried. Different thoughts came to their mind. They wondered if Oma was okay or if she was kidnapped or ill or even dead. They planned to send out a few men to go in search of her house the next day. On the day of the search, Oma and her friend Ada came out to their spot as early as usual. The people of Agi were relieved and pleased to see that Oma was alive and well. Mama Ijoma especially was so happy. She was almost getting high BP because of Oma's absence as that had never happened before. On seeing Oma, Mama Ijoma and Ijoma rushed to hug her. Mama Ijoma further went ahead to question Oma about her whereabouts these past four days. Oma explained that she fell ill with malaria and needed to rest for a few days before resuming. Mama Ijoma felt pity for her and insisted on Oma to show her where she lived so that she would come to visit whenever something like that happened again. But Oma refused, saying that she was only squatting at her friend Ada's place and she valued her privacy more than anything. She further promised to always find a way to send Mama Ijoma a message whenever she didn't show up. Mama Ijoma reluctantly accepted. One year later, Mama Ijoma's very rich younger brother, Emmy, came back from abroad and his sister would not shut up about the very kind beggar she has grown to like a lot. 
One day, Emmy decided to go to his sister's shop to patronize her and buy some food. When he saw Oma, she was irresistibly beautiful and radiant. You wouldn't mistake her for a beggar any day. He watched Oma closely that day and saw how she related with everyone, especially Mama Ijoma and Ijoma, his niece. He was indeed moved. His sister introduced him to Oma and they exchanged pleasantries. The next day, he came again and observed from afar. He did this for close to a week but kept seeing the same attitude and pattern in Oma. So, he decided to engage. Hello, beautiful Oma, he began. How are you today? Remember me? He inquired from Oma. Oma did remember him, but she denied and said, Remember you? Please remind me again. Who am I speaking with? She pretentiously asked. It is me, Emmy. Mama Ijoma's brother. My sister introduced us the other day, he explained. Oh, Emmy, I remember now. They exchanged greetings and he left. This greeting gesture continued for another week. But one thing stood out to Oma. He never put money in her bowl. He would come, greet her, make small talks and leave. In fact, their talks was starting to grow into longer conversations. One day, Emmy asked for her story. She went ahead to tell him about how she was an orphan that worked her way to a very comfortable position in her town doing business until fire cut her shop and burnt everything. And in the bid to recover some things amidst the wildfire, a rod flew across and hit her eyes and that caused her blindness. She then decided to start all over in a new town, save us some money for surgery and start a business. Emmy was very impressed. Hmm, an ambitious young girl that came from nothing and is working her way back up after undergoing such misery. He praised her and encouraged her to keep up the good work. After a while, he left. He didn't come back again for another week. Oma was beginning to like him as he was very nice to her and made her feel like she hadn't felt in a while. She queried Mama Ijoma about Emi, her brother, and she mentioned that he traveled to Abba to see some of their family members residing there and that she wasn't sure of when he would return. Two weeks passed and Oma was beginning to get withdrawn. She was no longer as vibrant as she used to. She would come out every day hoping to see Emmy, but to no avail. Ada, Oma's friend, was constantly telling her to breathe and relax and that soon enough she would forget Emmy. On the third week, Emmy appeared. He walked up to Oma and firstly, he apologized for his absence and said that he had an emergency the next day after they spoke and he had to travel to Abba. And to make matters worse, he did not have any way of reaching her and was so occupied with the emergency that he didn't see any time at all for himself. He mentioned also that he had a little free time on his hands and so he decided to rush back to Agi at once to see Oma. Oma blushed. What is happening to me? She questioned herself. Emmy proceeded to tell Oma that he had a lot to think about while he was away and that he has decided to finance her surgery. Oma opened her mouth in shock. This was a shocker to her. She did not see it coming at all. Emmy went ahead to tell her that he really likes her and would like to help her get back on her feet, if she would let him. Oma was elated. However, she didn't give him a reply immediately. She instead gave him a close invite to her town, Oba, and asked him to come alone, 
that she would like to show him something really dear to her. Emmy did not get why the answer to his paying for surgery proposal would be an invite to her village, but he agreed anyway. On the D-Day, he set out to Oba, and when he got there, he started asking for directions to Oma's house, and he was getting directions to the Igwe's palace instead. He thought to himself, maybe she used to serve here or something, because I know she's an orphan. In fact, he had a lot of questions going through his mind, but he kept going. When he got to the gate of the king's palace, he was asked who he was looking for by the guards, and he replied that he was looking for Oma. With prior instructions, the guards already knew who he was and opened the gates for him. He was led into the palace where he was greeted by the back seat of the king's high chair. He greeted the king without seeing his face, and when the chair turned, he almost fainted. It was the most beautiful creature he had ever seen. Glowing in her full glory was Oma. He could not believe his eyes, and when he recovered a bit, his mouth could still not produce words. Oma decided to answer all the unasked questions and started by introducing herself. My name is Princess Omako Nwigwe of Oba Kingdom. I am the only child of the late Igwe of Oba Kingdom, and when my dad died, I was required to find a suitable husband to help me rule my kingdom. She went ahead to explain that in search of someone worthy of that position, her personal oracle told her that she needed to undergo a totally different and difficult journey by disguising as a blind beggar and that any man that shows her genuine kindness and love is the one she's searching for. She had to put up with this act for a year plus with her personal maid, Ada, before she found him. I am terribly sorry, Emmy, for lying about my identity, but I hope that you can understand why I did what I did. She apologized to Emmy. Emmy rushed to her and kissed her passionately, admiring and praising her humility and courage. He forgave her and accepted her marriage proposal. Mama Ijoma, her dear friend turned in-law, was so happy to learn about Omar's story and marriage to her brother. Seven days later, their marriage rites were due and they had a ceremony that the people of Oba and Agi talked about for years to come. The married couple lived happily ever after. Their rule in the kingdom of Oba was filled with passion, love, and kindness to the people. The moral of the story is that no matter the situation one finds themselves, kindness is non-negotiable. Show kindness to all around you. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind to one another, forgiving one another as Christ forgave you. I hope you enjoyed watching this story as much as I did writing it. And if you did, kindly give me a thumbs up. And please subscribe to my channel and share with your friends. Let me know the moral lessons you got from this story and where you're watching from in the comments below. Until next time, be well, my friends.